252 years before Our Lady appeared at La Salette, 323 years prior to the Fatima warnings, 379 years prior to her appearance at Akita, Japan, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in Quito, Ecuador, giving frightful predictions to Conceptionist sister, Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres. These prophecies are so astonishingly accurate as to reflect our days to the letter, even calling out by name secret societies that didn't even exist in 1594. Between 1594 and 1634, within the confines of Quito, Ecuador, a Conceptionist nun destined to be remembered as the Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres encountered apparitions from the Mother of God, validated by the local bishop during her lifetime. Astonishingly, upon the opening of her casket in 1906, her body defied decay, emitting the sweet scent of lilies. Mariana's narrative commences dramatically. Departing her native Spain in 1566 at the tender age of 13, accompanied by her aunt, she embarked on a journey to establish a conceptionist order in Quito under the auspices of Philip II. During their voyage, a tempest of monstrous proportions arose, accompanied by the emergence of a seven-headed serpent, a manifestation of Satan, poised to thwart the women's mission. Yet amidst the turmoil, our Lady appeared, cradling the infant Christ and wielding a cross with a lance affixed. With divine intervention, she vanquished the serpent, restoring tranquility to the tumultuous seas. To commemorate this event, the sisters of the order still bear a badge. In a subsequent encounter in 1582, Mariana beheld the tabernacle unveiling, revealing Christ in his crucified state, while his mother wept tears of pearls. Questioning her culpability, Mariana received reassurance from Our Lady, attributing the sorrow to the future transgressions of the 20th century. Moreover, Mariana witnessed a vision of the Heavenly Father, accompanied by three swords symbolizing impending chastisement, heresy, blasphemy, and impurity. Impelled by divine decree, Mariana consented to endure suffering on behalf of future generations. Subsequently, the swords descended upon her, culminating in her death and subsequent judgment before Christ's throne. Declared blameless, Mariana faced a choice, eternal repose in heaven or a return to earth to atone for the sins of the future. Opting for the latter, she was resurrected, destined for a life of penance. The narrative extends to December 8, 1634, when Archangels Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael, alongside the Queen of Heaven, appeared to Mariana. In a prophetic revelation spanning over two centuries, Our Lady foretold the reign of Pius IX, encompassing the declaration of pontifical infallibility and his subsequent confinement within the Vatican. The Pope's infallibility will be declared a dogma of faith by the same Pope chosen to proclaim the dogma of the mystery of my Immaculate Conception. He will be persecuted and imprisoned in the Vatican through the usurpation of the pontifical states and through the malice, envy and avarice of an earthly monarch. Further predictions alluded to a truly Catholic president in the 19th century, identified as Gabriel Garcia Moreno, who met a martyr's fate consecrating Ecuador to the Sacred Heart of Jesus before succumbing to assassination by a Masonic sect. Unbridled passions will give way to a total corruption of customs because Satan will reign through the Masonic sects, targeting the children in particular to ensure general corruption. Unhappy, the children of those times. Seldom will they receive the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. As for the sacrament of penance, they will confess only while attending Catholic schools, which the devil will do his utmost to destroy by means of persons in authority. Anticipating turbulence within the Church, Our Lady warned of the machinations of the Masonic sect and the peril posed by unfaithful clergy. Sacraments, including baptism, confirmation, confession, and the Holy Eucharist, would face unprecedented assaults. 
imperiling the spiritual welfare of the faithful. The same will occur with Holy Communion. Oh, how it hurts me to tell you that there will be many and enormous public and hidden sacrileges. In those times, the sacrament of extreme unction will be largely ignored. Many will die without receiving it, being thereby deprived of innumerable graces, consolation, and strength in the great leap from time to eternity. The sacrament of matrimony, which symbolizes the union of Christ with the Church, will be thoroughly attacked and profaned. Masonry, then reigning, will implement iniquitous laws aimed at extinguishing this sacrament. They will make it easy for all to live in sin, thus multiplying the birth of illegitimate children without the Church's blessing. Moreover, societal decay, epitomized by the desecration of holy matrimony and the decline of religious vocations, portended a dire future. The indifference of the affluent towards the Church's tribulations further exacerbated the prevailing crisis. Secular education will contribute to a scarcity of priestly and religious vocations. The Holy Sacrament of Holy Orders will be ridiculed, oppressed and despised, for in this both the Church and God Himself are oppressed and reviled, since He is represented by His priests. The devil will work to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every way, working with baneful cunning to destroy the spirit of their vocation and corrupting many. Those who will thus scandalize the Christian flock will bring upon all priests the hatred of bad Christians and the enemies of the one, holy, Roman Catholic and apostolic church. This apparent triumph of Satan will cause enormous suffering to the good pastors of the church and to the supreme pastor and vicar of Christ on earth, who, a prisoner in the Vatican, will shed secret and bitter tears in the presence of God our Lord, asking for light, sanctity, and perfection for all the clergy of the world, to whom he is king and father. Unhappy times will come wherein those who should fearlessly defend the rights of the church will instead, blinded despite the light, give their hand to the church's enemies and do their bidding. But when evil seems triumphant and when authority abuses its power, committing all manner of injustice and oppressing the weak, their ruin shall be near they will fall and crash to the ground. At the end of the 19th century and throughout a great part of the 20th, many heresies will be propagated in these lands. The small number of souls who will secretly safeguard the treasure of faith and virtues will suffer a cruel, unspeakable and long martyrdom. Many will descend to their graves through the violence of suffering and will be counted among the martyrs who sacrifice themselves for the country and the church. In those times, the atmosphere will be saturated with the spirit of impurity, which, like a filthy sea, will engulf the streets and public places with incredible license. Innocence will scarcely be found in children or modesty in women. He who should speak seasonably will remain silent. There shall be scarcely any virgin souls in the world. The delicate flower of virginity will seek refuge in the cloisters. Without virginity, fire from heaven will be needed to purify these lands. Sects, having permeated all social classes, will find ways of introducing themselves into the very heart of homes to corrupt the innocence of children. The children's hearts will be dainty morsels to regale the devil. Religious communities will remain to sustain the church and work with courage for the salvation of souls. The secular clergy will fall far short of what is expected of them because they will not pursue their sacred duty. Losing the divine compass, they will stray from the way of priestly ministry mapped out for them by God and will become devoted to money seeking it too earnestly. Pray constantly, implore tirelessly, and weep bitter tears in the seclusion of your heart, 
beseeching the Eucharistic heart of my most holy son to take pity on his ministers and to end as soon as possible these unhappy times by sending to his church the prelate who shall restore the spirit of her priests. Yet amidst the encroaching darkness, Our Lady promises intervention, heralding a great restoration where Jesus reigns through Mary. May the faithful draw strength from Our Lady of good success, persevering through the impending trials and emerging triumphant in the face of adversity. To be delivered from the slavery of these heresies, those whom the merciful love of my Son has destined for this restoration will need great willpower, perseverance, courage, and confidence in God. To try the faith and trust of these just ones, there will be times when all will seem lost and paralyzed. It will then be the happy beginning of the complete restoration. Then will the church, joyful and triumphant like a young girl, reawaken and be comfortably cradled in the arms of my most dear and elect son of those times. If he lends an ear to the inspirations of grace, one of which will be the reading of these great mercies that my son and I have had toward you, we shall fill him with graces and very special gifts and will make him great on earth and much greater in heaven. There we have reserved a precious seat for him because, heedless of men, he will have fought for truth and ceaselessly defended the rights of the church, deserving to be called martyr. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Your support is much appreciated. We'll see you next time on Christus Imperat.